Good. Well, if you're looking at me and thinking, what is that big thing on the right-hand side of his face? It's a bit of a plaster. It's Linda and I had a row last night, and she stabbed me with a pair. <laughs> she stabbed me with a pair of scissors. That's a joke for those of you that don't know me. See, the people that know me and know Linda laugh. The people that don't. No, I had a little, a minor operative procedure on my face yesterday. That's what went on there. Put those scissors away, Linda. <laughs> okay, well, <clears throat> just let me share a bit of information with you. To, oh, sorry, one other thing. Those of you that uh, have given yourselves to become family members here that we received in this morning, I just want to personally say, just welcome absolutely love the step you've taken to commit yourself to be part of this place and join us in a very intimate, personal, dedicated way in the mission God's got us on. Absolutely love it. A big smile on my face as you're all up there this morning. And I continue to believe this is to qualify to be part of this church. You just have to be good looking because I just saw the folk up there today and they were all so handsome. Well, listen, over the coming weeks, we will be looking at the great, journey God has ahead for us as a church and the greatness of the God who accompanies us on that journey. And we have put together for you some amazing resources, including video resources that we've made for you to work through in your community groups together alongside this series of being a people on the move. We put those resources together for you because we have a deep conviction as a leadership team that if you're part of this great church going on this great journey with our great God then God has a part for every single one of you to play in fact we won't get to where we need to go or achieve what God wants us to achieve here without you discovering your gifting your place your role in this great venture for Christ that we are on so the resources that we produced are simply entitled Play Your Part. So you'll have the, have the opportunity to, in, to start engaging with our Play Your Part resources starting this week in your community group settings. And if you're not part of a community group and you want to engage with the resources, I have one answer for you. Get yourself in a community group because it's in the context of commun the community of God's people that you will fully discover your place and the unique part that God has for you to play in where we're going. So look out for the introductory video link to our Play Your Part resources, which will be emailed out to you if you're part of a community group later this afternoon. Okay, for those who time how long I speak and preach, you're not started yet, you're starting now, because that was a notice I was doing for some resources. Have you enjoyed looking back over the last years, over the last couple of weeks, the last 40 years, and then over the last few weeks, the last few years? I mean, I really absolutely loved doing that. Well, the title this morning is not about looking back. The title this morning is the journey ahead. And as we look at the journey ahead, I want to frame it in terms of what Jesus had to say about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God was a big theme in Jesus's ministry. In fact, if you read the gospels, you'll see it's mentioned 126 times. And the definition of it was fairly simple. The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven was the place where God was king, the place where God ruled, the place where what God wanted done, God's will, was actually done. And wherever in the Gospels or in the New Testament church, that rule of God broke into people's lives, certain things happened. People repented. They turned to God. They got forgiven by God. They got filled with the Holy Spirit. They got saved from the judgment of God that was on them. And they got adopted as sons and daughters into God's family. That was the fruit of letting God's kingly rule, God's kingdom into your life. It opened the door to the rule of God, displacing the rule of Satan, displacing the rule of sin, displacing the rule of 
sin and death as well. And that's what continues to happen today. Wherever people let Christ in to be their king, those things happen. Happens all over the world. Every day, hundreds of thousands of people saved because they let Jesus in to be king. It happens right across Teesside regularly. And it happens through this church. This week, in this church, four people got saved and gave their lives to Christ. And wherever disciples of Christ keep the door open to God's rule, to God's kingdom coming into their lives, the kingdom of God increasingly comes in and they grow more and more holy, more and more Christ-like in their character, more and more obedient to God's ways and God's will and more and more fruitful in the works of Christ. That's what happens when the kingdom comes in. Jesus was constantly proclaiming the kingdom constantly teaching about the kingdom. Many of the parables start, the kingdom of God is like. And he was constantly demonstrating the kingdom through his love for people and his kindness to people and the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs that people saw in their lives when Jesus came on the scene as king. In Matthew 6, verse 31 to 33, if we can have that verse up, those two verses up, Jesus said this, he said, so don't worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Jesus made it clear, if you want to give your life to anything, don't give it to pursuing the things of this world Give yourself to pursuing the growth and the extension of God's righteousness and kingdom in your life. So what I'm saying to you this morning is this. Whatever the journey ahead looks like, it's all about more of the kingdom of God coming. More of the kingdom of God coming into our lives, more of the kingdom of God coming into the lives of those who don't yet know him or experience him as king. In fact, when we talk about being a people on the move, We're really talking about being a people who will actively pursue the coming of God's kingdom. So I want to ask two questions this morning under the title of the journey ahead. I want to ask the first question is why why would we want to be a people on the move? And the second is where will that move take us? So let's look at the first question. Why would we want to be a people on the move? If being a people on the move is about actively pursuing the extension of God's kingdom, why would we want to do that? That sounds like effort and hard work. Why not simply be grateful for what we have and settle? Take it easy. Build a nice house and life for yourselves and your families. Get some nice holidays. Eat, drink and be merry. Here are four reasons to actively pursue the extension of God's kingdom in our lives and in our communities. Four reasons to give ourselves to being a people on the move rather than a people that settle for comfort and ease. The first point is this. The kingdom of God is the only kingdom that's going to last. Can you believe the last five, four or five years? Can you? I mean, we had all the turmoil and all the challenge and all the emotional upset and political uncertainty of Brexit. And then just as we seem to be coming to some sort of decision and move out of that, we enter into a global pandemic, which affects and impacts our lives and shakes everything like we've never seen before. And then just as we think we're coming out of that, we're not completely out of it, by the way, but we are on the way, just as we're coming out of that, we have significant War in Europe, devastating, painful. I find it hard to open the news or listen to the news. Nothing seems secure and dependable. There's financial and economic uncertainty, trade uncertainties, political uncertainty, energy and fuel uncertainty, health, education, the care system, social services, local and central government all look more broken than I've ever seen before. Hebrews 12, verse 26 to 28 says this, at that time, 
His voice shook the earth. Now, he's, the, the writer to the Hebrews is speak, referring to Exodus 9.18 here, when Moses was up Mount Sinai receiving the Ten Commandments and God shook the mountain. But now he, that is God, has promised, once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably and with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. It shouldn't surprise us when the things of this world world start to be shaken. It's giving us and giving others understanding into the fact that the kings and the kingdoms of this world and the systems that man has built are not reliable. They're not dependable. They are not going to endure. They're not going to last forever. Many of them might not last our lifetime and they certainly won't last forever. But the kingdom we are receiving, the kingdom that Christ proclaimed and is ultimately king of cannot be shaken. Here's a good, simple reason to invest into God's kingdom. Guess what? It's going to be the only thing that endures. Build on anything else, pursue anything else other than Christ and his kingdom. And I want to tell you, you ultimately suffer loss. You will. It ultimately won't deliver. It'll ultimately fall apart. It ultimately won't be able to be taken with you. That's not a threat, it's a reality, a reality that Jesus and the scripture continually and loudly proclaim to people that people might come to their senses and not build on things that aren't going to last. Why actively pursue the kingdom? Why be a people on the move? Because it's the only kingdom worth investing into because it's the only kingdom that's going to endure and last. The second reason to be a people on the move, actively pursuing the kingdom of God is God's kingdom is the only kingdom that delivers fullness of life. If you want fullness of life for yourself, your family, for those you love, the only place you're going to find it is in seeking and pursuing the kingdom of God. In other words, by living under Christ's kingly rule and by living in obedience to him. Let me share with you a verse that I recently read a few weeks ago in 2 Chronicles in my daily devotional time with God that it illustrates something of this at work in my own life. It's 2 Chronicles 12, verse 14, a very short verse that I read. It says, Rehoboam, who was a bad king, by the way, did evil because he had not set his heart on seeking the Lord. You could put in brackets the Lord and his kingdom if you wanted to. Now, that verse is stating something quite profound that actually describes my life and my experience. If I don't actively set my heart on seeking God, on pursuing more of his kingdom in my life, I have a default drift. And it's a drift into doing wrong. It's a drift into doing evil. So I know if I neglected for a sustained length of time, giving time at the start of every day, like I do to devotionally seeking God, which I do through spending time each morning with God at the start of the day, in prayer, in worship, in Bible study, in reflection, and in listening to what he has to say to me. Without that consistent and intentional seeking of God in my daily life, I would most certainly drift into doing wrong. In fact, if I wasn't prioritizing seeking God and relationally spending time with him, in my day-to-day life, you would eventually have a church leader who behind the scenes was struggling with pornography, who was vulnerable to moral failure, who was possibly drinking too much, and who would certainly make some very self-centered, possibly even deceitful decisions. If Linda didn't seek God, she would still be a very nice, good person. (laughs) It's true. It's true. It's like... She is by nature nice and good and kind. And and sometimes I look at Linda and I just wish I was more like that. My who I am is so dependent and connected with who God is and what he puts 
into my life. If I didn't put seeking God at the centre of my life and my days, I would drift into doing ungodly things. Because, But because I live my life centering myself and my day on seeking God and seeking his kingdom, I don't live doing the wrong things I don't really want to do. I live with the fullness of life that comes from doing the right things that I want to do, which more importantly are the right things that God wants me to do. And so seeking God and actively pursuing his kingdom, committing myself to be someone on the move with God, always looking to go deeper with God and take more ground for God in my personal life, brings me into a godly life with godly fruitfulness, which in turn brings me into an enjoyment and fullness of life I would never experience through being passive and half-hearted about seeking God and seeking his kingdom in my life. Anyone else on that page? All right, three of you. That's good. There are, of course, countless other examples and areas we could talk about, but the Bible tells us this, and it's my experience, that pursuing God and his kingdom in a daily way brings a fullness of life that no other kingdom nor the pursuit of anything that's of this world has the power to bring into our lives. That's another good reason to commit to being a people on the move with God, actively pursuing his kingdom. It's the only kingdom that delivers fullness of life. Thirdly, it's what Christ deserves from us. The reason I follow Christ is because I understand how much he loved me and how he gave himself for me. He relentlessly pursued me and ultimately paid the highest price it's possible to pay in order to open the door for me to move from the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom, the kingdom of light, and into relationship with him as king. Why on earth would I want to live in anything other than a wholehearted, passionate, actively pursuing Christ and the, and ext the extension of his kingdom way? Why would I want to live any other way other than that? How could I settle for something half-hearted, lukewarm, that wants to pitch my tent and settle when there's a battle to be fought and won? A battle between good and evil, a battle between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, a battle for people to be rescued and saved. None of us have any sense of hard-heartedness when it comes to our response to the Ukraine-Putin situation, do we? I bet you everyone in this, it, there's no half-hearted. We all feel very strongly and passionately about it, unless you're dead. You know, that was a stupid thing to say, but anyway, just <laughs> let's move on. And we pray, don't we? We pray a bit into that situation because we understand that this isn't simply human failure and wrongdoing. It's also a battle and struggle with spiritual principalities and powers of darkness, as Ephesians 6.12 tells us it is. At the moment, our focus is rightly on the evil destruction that's being perpetrated by principalities and powers of darkness through Putin. But if our eyes are open to every bit of evil being perpetrated at any given time across the whole world, we would understand there really is a battle between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness Amen. that's going on all the time. Christ gave his all for us to rescue us, to save us, to bring us out of that kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Why would we want to be passive about engaging in the extension of that kingdom, passive in engaging in his great rescue plan for broken, bombed people in this world. We need to be a people on the move because sitting and doing nothing is not the response Christ deserves from us, especially in the light of what he's done for us and especially in the light of the devastation, destruction and loss the enemy is unleashing on this world. Why actively pursue the kingdom? Why be a people on the move? Because Christ deserves that as a response from us because unsaved people deserve to have a chance of rescue and we are God's means of that happening. And finally, on why be a people actively pursuing the God, the God, the kingdom and not settling is because it's what we were created and destined for. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm wired with a desire for adventure and exhilaration. I don't do boredom. 
I'm wired with the need to find a sense of destiny and purpose, with a desire to make a difference, to give my life to a greater cause than myself and to see my life count for something. Of all the different things I've explored to try and find those things in, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that comes anywhere near the exhilaration, the joy, the thrill, the sense of adventure, destiny and purpose that comes from engaging with God and seeking his kingdom above all else. I couldn't passively sit and observe, settle and watch. Active engagement and pursuit of the extension of God's kingdom is what I was created for. I love that picture Matt shared last week. That vision, Matt Biddlecombe, when he spoke of God showed him a huge library, vast, with buildings and corridors for every nation in the world. Miles of bookcases for every church and era, reaching from the floor to an unreachable ceiling far above. God took him to a section marked Tees Valley Community Church, filled with hundreds of volumes reaching backwards further than the beginning and forward for years to come. Each book was a record of God's activity in this church, the words he'd spoken, the miracles he'd done, the plans he'd designed, page after page, chapter after chapter. I'm quoting what Matt said. And here's the thing. There were sections, chapters, books even, with our names written in them. Well, that's a vision that's entirely in line with Scripture. You know that, don't you? Read Revelation chapter 20. Things done on the earth by us, written in books in heaven. Books that don't stay on the shelf. Books that get opened and read. The Bible says some people will be full of dread on that day when the books are open and read from. But for others, like you and I, who've been saved by Jesus and who've given our lives over to following him as disciples and serving him, how thrilling and exciting is that day going to be for us when the books are read? Amen? Is that not going to be an exciting day? I'm looking forward to that day. I mean, there's a few little bits I might want missed out, but mostly I'm full of excitement. I was with Ray Mills, who's part of our staff team. He had his annual work appraisal on Friday morning and which I was involved in. And many of you will remember from the narrative Ray and Sylvia took us through on the morning of our 40 year celebration that Ray's been part of the work here for 35 years. At one point in the appraisal, I asked Ray about how he felt about all that was currently happening in the church. And a big smile came on his face as he said, I just couldn't be more thrilled with what God is doing here. And most of all, he went on to say, how exciting and an incredible privilege it is to have played a part in it. At which point a big smile came on my face as my heart resonated with a sense of how awesome is our God and how outrageously generous is he that he should call us, should call you, should call me to co-work with him and play a part. Is the, in, the, in this amazing, unshakable eternal kingdom of the son God loves being established on the earth and he's given me and you a part to play in that. The thrill of fulfilling the call and destiny of God over our lives to be doing the very thing we were created and put on the earth to do to enjoy God and to serve him being glorified and in so doing have our names and works written in God's books placed in his library and ultimately one day to hear those books with our names being read out aloud by God, who in their right mind would want to give themselves to the temporary things of this world when you can invest in that? So in summary, why should we be a people on the move? Why should we give ourselves to actively seeking and pursuing the extension of God's kingdom in our lives and communities? For good reasons. It's the only kingdom that will last It's the only kingdom that will bring fullness of life. It's what Jesus deserves as a response from us and a lost need from us. And it's what we we were created and destined for. Amen. Take a breather. So will I. My class is in place. Thank you. Okay. So where will being a people on the move take us? Two points. The first point is this. Into the unmeasurable, 
and the unimaginable. Ephesians 3, 20 to, 20 to 21, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. The power of looking back as we've done over the last couple of weeks is you increasingly bring into focus the God who does immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. So it was so great to see a picture of a house, wasn't it? A small house where eight people started the church a couple of weeks ago. And then to look at this centre today and to understand 842 people are now part of it. Might be more now. I don't know if the people of today have been added in. But that's not even the full growth and impact of this church. Do you know that over the years, over those four decades, thousands of people have found a spiritual home in this place? And in some way, shape or form, this church has played a part in furthering them in their journey. We've got thousands upon thousands of people. You can't just measure it with the people that are here at the moment. And tens of thousands of people through this church and the work of this church over those decades have heard the gospel. They've touched the love of God right across Teesside, but also across the Northeast and different parts of this nation and across the nations, India, Poland, Ukraine, Zimbabwe, Namibia, to name a few. The church started with the leadership and ministry of one man, Ian Kirby. Now we have a multitude of ministries and kingdom extending initiatives currently part of this church, CAP, Edens, Community Grocers, Connects, 313, work into families, into prisons, into schools, to the elderly, to the young, to the schools. The list could go on and on. It started with eight people in a house. Now this work employs 40 people. And of course, that's not all centred in the Oakwood, is it? We have increasing numbers of kingdom extending initiatives right across Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough and Stockton in Ragworth, Easterside, Shaftesbury Street, Tuesday, I was at a, a, a meeting where they initiated a new one called the Open Well in South Bank. Our work through 313 even reaches into Durham and Sunderland, and recently we've been in discussions about extending it into Newcastle. God has increasingly given us a greater and wider kingdom reach. So even on Friday night as an eldership team, we were again talking about what kingdom extending initiatives might look like in Hartlepool and Darlington and Redcar. As part, of the call of, as part of the call God has on us to be one church impacting all five of the key towns across Teesside. The God of the unmeasurable and unimaginable is of course not just brought into focus by looking back on our journey as a church, it also happens to be brought into focus as we look back personally on our journeys. I've shared with you I was 60 last year. And it became a moment of looking back and reflecting what God had done in me and through me after, over the last 41 years of being a Christian. When I considered where I would have been without God and where I am today and what God has done through my life, ministry and leadership over the last 41 years, I would look any, anyone in the eye, wherever they rap, whatever their weaknesses and failings, and say with total conviction to them, if you put your hand in God's hand, if you live your life centred on him, you will experience the unimaginable and unmeasurable at work in your life. In fact, as I look back on what God has done corporately and individually, I come to the conclusion that there is no limit on what can God can do with us and through us as we move forward. There isn't. I come to the conclusion that whatever the future looks like, we will be moving into the unimaginable and the unmeasurable because that's the nature of the God who goes with us. Tees Valley has 700,000 people with a limitless God who is leading us, going before us and going with us. We can touch every one of those 700,000 people. They can hear the gospel through us. They can touch the kingdom and experience the miraculous life and eternity changing love of God impacting their lives. If we will say, here we are, God, we're available. We want to serve you in this great mission. In 205, God spoke to this church from Isaiah 54 about being thousands of people being saved and added to this church as disciples and followers of Christ. 
In the summer of 2021, God spoke about us being a church and people that were going to significantly reform the culture, transform the culture of Teesside and the Northeast. And on the 21st of February, 22, I preached a prophetic word here on Sunday morning from the Queen of Sheba's visit to Solomon in which God said the fame of our relationship as a church and as a people with the Lord would spread further and wider than we ever imagined possible. I believe all those prophetic words. I can see it. I can see it happening. It's not a question of if, just a question of when and how. But that'll be a surprise, won't it? If we will partner with God, if we will be a people on the move, refusing to be passengers, refusing to settle for comfort, willing above all else to actively seek and pursue God's kingdom in our lives and the extension of God's kingdom into our communities, I prophesy to you, and that includes you online, Whoever you are, whatever your age, whatever your background, whatever your past failures, whatever your strengths and weaknesses, God will do in you and through you as an individual individual, the unimaginable and the unmeasurable. And if you will actively play your part, another plug for our resources, in the work God is doing with us as a community of God's people, you will have the joy of being part of God doing unimaginable and unmeasurable things in and through this great church. What does the journey ahead look like? Where will the journey take us? I don't know all the details, but I know it'll take us into the unmeasurable and the unimaginable because of who's with us and what he can do. And finally, where else will it take us? Well, the second last point of really what six points disguised are two. Um, <laughs> It will take us into multiple fires and sails. S-A-I-L-S. A couple of weeks ago, the eldership team and a number of the prophets from our church had the privilege of being down at our work at the shack in Ragworth, which, by the way, is a great kingdom extending initiative. As we were praying together, a couple of significant prophetic words were shared. Simon Coe had a word in which he described the work in Ragworth as a a fire for God, an extension of God's kingdom, a fire. But he went on to say that he saw many fires across Teesside and that fires for God across the Tees Valley would be a pattern for us as a church as we move, move forward on the journey. Then Harold Wilmshurst, you saw him on the video this morning, coming into family membership here, he said in this, prophesied in the same meeting that he saw the church as a tall ship with lots of masts and sails. He saw the ship currently moving across the still waters of the harbour, but the harbour master is saying it's time for the open ocean and more speed. The prophetic went on to say that it's time for us to raise more sails, more sails to catch the power and the wind of the Holy Spirit, a wind that will blast those sails and take the ship forward at a pace faster than anything we've known before. Jesus' strategy when he was on the earth was simple. He went about proclaiming and demonstrating the kingdom, proclaiming and demonstrating the difference the love and the rule of God could make in people's lives. The work and the ministry of Jesus is the same work and ministry we're called to individually and corporately. We're called in everything we do to proclaim and demonstrate the kingdom of God, just like Jesus did. And every time we do that, in however small a way, we strike a match. And when we strike a match, there's potential for a fire to start, a fire for the kingdom. Look what was achieved when 40 years ago, eight people took a kingdom initiative, eight people struck a match. What might happen if 800 people were prepared to repeatedly strike matches? Linda got saved in 1978. I know many of you don't think she was born to 1980, looking at her, but she was saved in 1978 because a lady called Gwen Holden, a school teacher, struck a match in the class she was teaching by telling her class about what Jesus had done in her life. As a result, half the pupils in the class became Christians and one of those was Linda's sister who went on to be a real catalyst in Linda herself getting saved. On Tuesday, Linda and I had the privilege with uh, some others from from this church of being at an opening of a kingdom-extending initiative in South Bank called the Open Well. 
Nikki and Krista Coulson that have recently, well, they were up here becoming part family members uh, today. They got saved a number of years ago and have seen Jesus do incredible, restorative, redemptive work in their lives, marriage and family. Having been born and bred in South Bank, which many of you will know is one of the most disadvantaged areas in Middlesbrough, they achieved a number of years ago a most significant indicator of success in South Bank. They left South Bank until God called them back to South Bank, called them to buy a house there, called them to proclaim and demonstrate Jesus and his kingdom into the brokenness of South Bank. So with a team and a community of God's people, some of them are part of this church, they opened a venue on Tuesday nights where people can come, can eat, drink, find fellowship, worship and hear God's word. What are they doing? They're striking a match with a view to starting a kingdom fire in South Bank. They're unfurling a sail with a view to catching the wind of the Holy Spirit. They're opening a well with a view to people coming and finding living waters. And I tell you, it will happen. I'm increasingly seeing the journey ahead for us as a church involves people within TVCC starting kingdom fires right across Teesside, unfurling multiple sales, kingdom initiatives that are part of the toolship called TVCC that God's called to serve this area. Multiple fires, multiple sales, kingdom proclaiming, kingdom demonstrating initiatives right across Stockton, Middlesbrough, and also increasingly into Darlington, Hartlepool, and Redcar. Here's a question for you in the light of the journey ahead, having many fires and sales. Here's the question for you. Will you strike a match? Will you get involved in unfurling a sail? Will you be someone who is prepared to be a part of a people on the move for God? Willing to take a chance, willing to strike a match and see what fire God might start? Will you be a disciple of Jesus that is willing to put your hand into the hand of Jesus and give yourself in whatever way you can, according to your personality and gifting, to talking about and demonstrating the love of Jesus wherever God has placed you, to talking about and demonstrating the glorious kingdom that our Jesus is king of with the people that God brings across your path. Striking a match doesn't have to be a big thing or a false thing. It can be a small act of kindness, a positive word of encouragement, a willingness to invite someone to a Sunday service or an alpha. Or it can be an initiative you take with others into your community, just like the open well, or something into your community that's completely different, but in some way demonstrates the love, the care, and the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus to people. Will you strike a match in your place of work, in your school, in your college, in your family, in your neighbourhood? Will you get involved in unfurling a sail, however small, that adds to the speed of this tall ship called TVC Church that God has called and commissioned for Teesside? We had John O'Connor with us as leaders in Taking Ground a couple of weeks ago. John with Joanne leads Junction 42 and the Connect communities we work with. John, who was a heroin addict for many years, served time in all seven prisons in the Northeast. He got miraculously saved and delivered instantaneously of substance addictions one night in Durham Prison in a cell because in his cell he cried out to God to rescue him and save him from those addictions. He cried out to God because he remembered something, someone on a street in Newcastle said to him in passing several months previous to that. Someone said to him, do you know something? Jesus can deliver you from this addiction, from heroin addiction. And he's been free of all addiction since, which was over 20 years ago because someone on the streets of Newcastle in passing struck a match that said what Jesus could do and started a fire in his life that has absolutely spread to the lives of hundreds and thousands of other people that have prison backgrounds. When the God that goes with us in this journey is limitless in his love and power and committed to doing the unimaginable and the unmeasurable, then you don't know what God can do when you strike a small match for Jesus. The journey ahead for us as a people on the move, as a people willing to engage in playing our part, what does it look like? Where will it take us? 
Oh, it'll take us into the unimaginable. It'll take us into the unmeasurable. It'll also take us into many fires and into many sails because the one we journey with is a limitless God who's the king of an absolutely irrepressible kingdom, a kingdom he's called us to be part of and a kingdom he's called us to actively pursue the extent.